Hey, let's say aliens invaded Earth right above the stash. Which one of us would be the best representative to go out there and meet alien life for the first time? Not him. <laughs> He's less human than the aliens. <laughs> well, I'm pretty personable. I'm diplomatic. Yes, he will talk to anybody and treat them as if they're his closest friend on Earth. Overly friendly. Almost to the point where, like, is this person mentally stable? Right. You know, like, the aliens start second-guessing. Maybe we shouldn't have landed here. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how in War of the Worlds, it was a little tiny germ that sent the aliens packing? Mm -hmm. Maybe in this new War of the Worlds. It's the Chen virus. <laughs> <laughs> Splendiferous episode of Comic Book Men, the only show that soothes the ego better than Mantis. I'm Kevin Smith. Brian Johnson. Walt Flanagan. Mike Zapsek. Ming Chen. Walt, what happened this week? How you doing? Hey, hey guys, how you doing? Pretty good, buddy. Oh my goodness. I got the Clash of Titans Kraken from 1980 Mattel. Oh my God, that's wow. awesome. I haven't seen one of those in decades, man. I see the top is open. Uh, can we release the Kraken out of the box oh, to see, get can. a closer look well, at you it? You definitely can. Uh, look at that. Yeah, we got the tail. I love this. It says contents. One Kraken. Yes. <laughs> Were you guys big fans of Clash of the Titans? Loved it. Yeah, I mean, I think I was like, what, 10, 11 when it came out? This was easily the high point of the movie, right? It was. The showstopper, as they call it, right? Like when it comes up out of the water. Classic Harryhausen. Harryhausen. Grew up with Harryhausen films. Sinbad. Sinbad, Jason and the Argonauts. Jason and the Argonauts, uh, yeah. I loved Clash of the Titans. We'd just gotten cable for the first time around then, and it was in high rotation, so you could watch it over and over again. And I'll be honest, I was a kid, there was a little bit of nudity in it, so that also made it something you really wanted to watch. I didn't like it. You didn't I, dig it? It felt like a foreign movie shot through gauze. It felt like it was just like from another country and it was dubbed. It just didn't feel like I have a, a distaste for foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> what a time, though, huh? I mean, time of the gods, you know? Oh, you mean back then? Yeah, the you Greek gods. Hated it. It. Why? No pizza, no chicken fingers, <laughs> no indoor yes. plumbing. Everyone is trying to fight you. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. It's Krakens, it's Medusas. Like, they're all over the place. They're skeletons. <laughs> How'd the toy line fare for uh, Clash of the Titans? Was it a, a big success? I don't think it was a big success because I never had it as a kid. I didn't have any of them as a kid. Was this just the only uh, uh, doll? Or If you look at the back of the box, they've got uh, Pegasus, and they've got four uh, figures as well. I used to see one or two pop up at flea markets every now and then, but they're either broken or missing pieces. All right, I mean, it's definitely cool. We don't ever see any Clash of the Titans merchandise. No. Um, I think I like to get it for the stash because everybody that comes in here, everybody in our world, mm -hmm. loves this movie. Yeah. You know, and this stuff is hard to come by, man. What are you looking to get for it? Well, looking to hopefully get, mm, start out high, uh, 800. What negotiating skills you have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about 300? How about six? No. All four arms are there. They might be loose, but they're all there. They are. Uh, 400. How about uh, 450? Yeah, I'm not going to quibble over 50 bucks. 450 it is. Done. Thank you. Appreciate right. that. There you go. 450. Thank you, sirs. Uh, let me just get one more look at it. OK. <laughs> Take care. All right. Thank you. Take it easy. Yeah, that's huge news. Yeah, 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 I'll tell them. Yeah, no, I'll see you there. All right, bye. Mike, come over here. Got some great news for you guys. What's up? I just got off the phone with Kevin. He just told me that Funko is going to be making pops of us. What? 
We're gonna get our own pop figures. Well, it's about time. <laughs> They've literally made every other character. <laughs> <laughs> We're the last four guys. Let me tell you about Funko Pops, man. You're nobody in this world until you've been popped. I've been a uh, Funko Pop for Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. At San Diego Comic Con last year, they did an exclusive of me as Fat Man. So it's a ingenious little toy. I don't know if it's because of the big eye factor or what, but people fell in love with these. And anywhere you go in this world, you could buy a pop. You land in any airport, you're walking around, you're gonna see those two giant black eyes staring at you for some character or another. And to think, though, that we would be worthy that Funko would would, would be like, would waste their money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not only that, but Funko wants us to come out and be there for the launch of their first retail mega store. Wow, where is it? It's just outside of Seattle, a town called Everett. They want us to come out with Kevin. They're gonna present the pops to us. It's gonna be like a huge event. Oh, man. I'm not gonna be able to go. I don't fly. I know you don't fly, but I mean, come on, like, you're getting your own pop figure. Someone's gotta watch this dash. I don't fly. I mean, you guys go pick up the pops, get mine for me, and I'll have Rob Bruce cover your guys' hours while you guys are away. He's come in here for consultations all the time. He's very knowledgeable, and let's face it, it ain't brain surgery. I think the real news here is Rob Bruce can replace both of you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's like a glove. Look at Sharp. Appreciate this opportunity bringing me in. I can't believe it. Well, all you need is this, official trainee. So guys, here we are. Early sneak peek of what we built. What do you think, huh? Wow. It's like a glove. Look, look at sharp, man. I feel like I'm in the major leagues, dude. I can't believe it. There's something about that t-shirt. Anybody who wears it makes them look 10 times more handsomer than they really are. Appreciate this opportunity bringing me in. I can't believe it. You know, I'm friggin' floored. Well, all you need is this. Wow. Official trainee. That's what you need on that side. World's oldest trainee. <laughs> <laughs> so my gang is out at the Funko Pop headquarters, so I had to bring in Rob Bruce. Welcome, for the first time ever, to the table, pop culturalist extraordinaire Rob Bruce, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. What was it like running the store with the maestro? Going to be one of my fondest experiences ever. That's but... sad, man. <laughs> that is sad. I learned so much. I remember when you first started, you had the same kind of wide-eyed enthusiasm. You've lost that over the years. You don't remember how special it was to work side by side with me. Work? I'm a Funko Pop now. <laughs> hey, how's it going, guys? How you doing? I've got some items that I think are going to bring a lot of nostalgic memories back. I have the Marvel medallions, Spider-Man, I've got Hulk. Oh, my God. And I've got Conan, I've got a complete set of bronze, and I've got a complete set of silver Spider-Man, Hulk, and Conan. These are advertised in Marvel Comics in 73 and 74. Oh, I'm very well and aware of these. I've actually never seen these in person. I must have saw that ad, though, in the comic books a million times. Yeah. Remember, as a kid, I pleaded with my mother yep. to please let me order a set of the medallion slash coins. It was just too much money back then. Can, you, can I touch them? Absolutely. Wow. Well, you see the bronze a lot. I've seen those at comic book shows, and even at the flea market, you find them every once in a while. But the silver ones are really tough. I think it was a very limited run, probably like less than a 1,000. Right. Yeah, you're not likely going to see the entire set all together in one place. I mean, an odd choice, right? Obviously not Spider-Man. Flagship character. Right. Hulk. Huge. Definitely a no-brainer. But Conan, you would figure they would do a Fantastic Four coin, do a Daredevil coin, Iron Man, but that just shows you how many copies he was selling, that they were like, they felt that they could move a Conan coin. It may have been the most popular one in the run at that particular time. You gotta remember that time period. It's true. At this point, you've got Barry Windsor Smith drawing him, and it's like state of the art, just because that, that barbarian uh... aspect. Yeah. You got, you know, John Buscema, who comes on for an insane yeah. long run on that book. You're like one of those irritating couples who've been dating a week, finish each other's sentences, and make plans. Right. <laughs> Already moving in together. Oh my god. <laughs> Can you see the writing on the wall? I mean, if we, if we become a coin shop, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely interested. What are you looking to get for him? I'm asking the low price, $2,500. For all six? For all six. 
you have to sell them as a set, or would you, or would you be willing uh, to sell one? Which one are you interested in? What about the Spider-Man? What would you offer? 250, 300. Mm. Yeah, well, um... 300. I, I understand you got 300 a... for Spider-Man. 400. Three and a quarter. 350. Yeah. 350 is a good deal? 350. Okay. Spider-Man. All right. Thank Jim. you. You're welcome. There you go. 350. Pleasure doing business with you guys. All right, man. That's Have awesome. a great day. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank All right. You. Thank you, guys. Hear that? Thanks Real to work. death. Yeah. This is like a fanboy's dream. It's like a theme park. You're too late to add rides. Maybe you need a guy like me on your board of directors. There you go. Wow. Look at these books. All from 64 to 69. Amazing collection, huh? So Mike, Brian, and I hop on a plane, fly all the way across the country to Everett, Washington, and we arrive at the Funko HQ. CEO Brian is there, and uh, the guy who actually founded Funko, Mike, is there as well. I, I really, really want to thank you guys for inviting us down here. I, this, this is incredible. I also want to thank you guys for, for making pops of us. I mean, that's insane. I, wh when can we see them? Hold on. Not so quick. <laughs> we got to make it a big deal, right? We got a proper unveiling of you guys being immortalized in the vinyl. You know, the, I think the dream for any geek is like, oh, man, what if I became a pop one day? You know, I right? love it, man. Well, we appreciate the enthusiasm. It was a blast to make. So you got Funko Mike and Funko Bry. Funko Mike created Funko. Funko Bry bought the company. And together, these guys have built this plastic empire. And they go from, like, not just Hanna-Barbera characters or Marvel or DC. They have pop television, pop music, pop movies. They got all these different categories. So they keep popping everybody, man. man. You guys have, like, a million figures. What was the one that started it all? Big Boy. The Big Boy bobblehead was the first thing. And the only reason was that I wanted a Big Boy bobblehead, but you could only find these paper mache versions or ceramic versions from the late 50s, early 60s. They were about five or 600 bucks. So I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if people could buy a Big Boy bobblehead for $10? That's how it started. I did a handshake deal with Big Boy. We did it. We made them, filled the garage full of them, and. I remember my parents were over, my mom started crying, goes, honey, these are beautiful, but nobody's gonna want this. <laughs> For me personally, my first foray into collectibles was Pez, and, and I think that's what got me into it. And you know, when Mike started Funko back in 98, I was like, holy crap, this guy just made an evil Knievel bobblehead, or he's got a Count Chocula, or a Jean Lafoot from Captain Crunch. How do I get my hands on this? And then really what was, what is he gonna come up with next? Because this stuff was speaking to me big time. This is stuff that I grew up with. This is what pulled on my heartstrings. And so not only did I fall in love with collectibles, I fell in love with Funko. I mean, that was that was the start. It's pretty unbelievable. We've been selling pops at the stores for years. We see them flying off the shelves. And it was nice thing that he was a collector. He was a fellow pop culture fan like us. So guys, we got a couple hours until this thing opens. The, the crowds are gathering outside. Can we show you around, show you what we've built, uh, show you the store. Oh, I don't know. Do you guys want to see it? Yeah. Oh, are you yeah, kidding I, me? I, I guess we'll take a gander. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we would love to. So, guys, here we are. Early sneak peek of what we built. This is like a fanboy's dream. I think it turned out pretty cool, and we're, we're excited to show you guys. It's like a theme park. Is it too late to add rides? Maybe we can squeeze it in. <laughs> Maybe you need a guy like me on your board of directors. There you go. This is our take at Star Wars. We had one guy over 45 days sculpt everything you see here Whoa. by hand. Who needs Lucasfilm? You can just come here. There you go, absolutely. <laughs> this is our love letter to Harry Potter. We have a seven-foot Haggard pop that you can pose with. This is our New York City, a chance to show off our love with Marvel. We got Green Goblin with Spider-Man up on the wall. Deadpool on with his Chimichanga truck. Stan Lee in the newsstand. A ton of pigeons, because what is New York City without pigeons? You guys are insane. When you walked in those doors, you felt like this is somebody who really cares about their work. This is clearly somebody not worried about the bottom line, <laughs> because there was a lot of money spent on this place, and it looks fantastic. Everywhere you look, you can just take pictures with these giant totems of our childhood. Let's take you into Gotham. Oh. Wow. So this is our take on the Batman 66 cave. This is amazing. You need a legit bat cave. Let's go, old chum. <laughs> it's the work of mad geniuses, right? Yeah. You are. You're mad geniuses. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. That was the first appearance of Poison Ivy. At 14, this is the closest thing you're coming to sex. <laughs> My absolute honor to be here for this very special occasion. The comic book men have not seen their pop, so let's introduce it to them. Ready? <laughs> This is 
the Funko Lounge. Pool table, ping pong tables, full-blown arcade over here, and four lanes of bowling. Do you have to force your employees to go home? I worked at a company once for like, well, here's a break room. We got a new coffee machine, and like, we thought that was awesome. You gotta give it up for him. This has answered the question I've had for decades, like why I've hated and subsequently quit every job I've ever had. Yeah. Because it's not a place like this. I would literally just sleep here. I mean, if I could just live here. You sleep in the basement of the stash, so you would be very comfortable in here. <laughs>just found my comic book collection from when I was a kid. Oh, yeah? My mom didn't throw them out, it seems. 10 out of 10 people come in here with the exact opposite, opposite story. story, right. What, what era of books are we... Uh... All, all from 64 to 69. Really? A yeah. big collection, huh? I didn't think I had that many when I was growing up. I don't really know what to do with them. I'm thinking about selling them. Okay. I got them out in the car. Can you guys want to take a look? Absolutely, man. Cool. Lead the way. Wow, look at these books, man, amazing. What a great collection. I could tell immediately right off the top. Daredevil 16, first time Romita drew Spider-Man. Right, right, yeah. Well, look at that, holy cow. First Kingpin. First Kingpin. Yeah, put that on the table. Yeah. Some early X-Men. This is a really, really nice collection. What, what about that one? Look at that. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Nice book. That was the first appearance of Poison Ivy. First appearance of Poison right. Ivy, yeah. At 14, this is the closest thing you're coming to sex. I don't want to get personal, but let's just uh, talk about comics. Yeah. Ooh, Creeper number one. Wow. Steve Ditko cover. Very, very nice. I'm speechless. That's one of the funnest part of the job, getting in there and just picking through a big, gigantic collection and finding the gems. A lot of times you see these books, and they've been sitting in a room getting hot and cold for 20 years. They start to degrade. But this was the exact opposite. The books were all in, like, middle or better grade. So we talked it over, and we uh, came to the conclusion. We felt that um, Amazing Spider-Man 50, the first Kingpin, would be a book that we, we should go after. Really nice condition. Uh, an Avengers issue 59 and Creeper number one. Ooh. You know, a book that not a lot of people... I thought people... that was his nickname. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you thinking, Rob, for these three? The Kingpin book's really hot. In that condition probably retails for about 250 The uh, Avengers book, not as much. What's that, 75 to 100 maybe? And the Creepers, that's a $25 book all day long. So we're, you know, probably talking retail, about 375 to 400 for the books. Right. Um, so 180 oh. Um... How about 250? You still got hundred dollars in there. How about 200? But that's really as high as I'm going to be able to go today. I'll do it. Done. Done. How's it going, Everett? Get the bucko for next. Give Everett a welcome. Finally, the big moment arrives. It's time for the grand opening. They have a big stage set up, and it's time for the grand reveal. I'm dying to see these pops. I'm dying to see how we turned out. I want to bring up on stage a really cool uh, friend of Funko. Kevin, come on up. Well, it's an absolute honor uh, to be here today with you all on Everett for this very special occasion where heaven on earth is literally opening right in front of our eyes. Um, I've been inside, and it's everything you think. It's beautiful. Uh, I'm a huge Funko fan, and I know the pleasure of being popped. Sounds dirtier than I meant it, but you know what I'm talking about. Thanks, folks. So Kevin has already been popped, but the comic book men have not. So let's bring on stage Mike Brian Min. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, the comic women have not seen their pop, so let's introduce it to them. Ready? <laughs> wow. It's like you! <laughs> Holy crap. All right, let's give it up to the comic book wow. men and Kevin Smith. <laughs> Funko HQ is now officially open. We love you, Everett. They look amazing. Mine has like nice lush hair. It was crazy. Mike, you, Brian, Kevin, 
all of them revealed. Well, I mean, just tell me, what did it feel like? It was, it was like being a kid again. It was a toy lover's dream. Thank you for waiting in line for this. Oh, yeah. Here you go, brother. You want me to sign for Walt, too? Not a problem. <laughs> there you go, my friend. Awesome. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go, brother. Look, it looks good, right? Have you seen your pop yet? You have it? I have one right here. Hold on. Come on, right? <laughs> oh my God. The Walt Flanagan pop vinyl figure. It's unbelievable. It's this comic book, man. It's just my name on it. I've been lucky enough to be made in plastic as Silent Bob a few times, and then once as Kevin Smith, but I was never more thrilled than when I saw all four of you guys get popped. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, man, we've run out of time. For Comic Book Men, I'm Kevin Smith. Brian Johnson. Walt Flanagan. Rob Bruce. Mike Zapsick. Ming Chen. Pop goes the Funko, and now we're all toy boys. Good night. <laughs>